What's up everybody? Okay, color. Color has the power to make a good image great and can make that exact same image downright terrible. But by learning how to identify colors and their relationship to each other, you can make it a lot easier to uh, provide better images, to bring your images to the next level, to really improve your photography. Color theory is an important part of graphic design and artists like painters and illustrators use it to deliver a message to the viewer. Now I think today, uh, new photographers are finding it easier to take great photos. Uh, technology and the easy access of knowledge like you know places like YouTube, uh, you can really learn how to do really complex techniques like you know luminosity masking, exposure blending, and focus stacking. There's a bunch of tutorials all over the place on how to enhance color, how to enhance contrast and sharpness, but what I don't see a lot of is why and when to use them. In this video, I want to try and explain color theory and how to apply it to your photography. What is color theory? It's simply putting colors together that, that complement each other. Uh, this is called color harmony. It's a fancy way of saying colors that work well together and look good. So let's jump on the computer here and I'm going to show you guys a little bit about the color wheel, how colors work, and uh, yeah, we'll get into how we can uh, improve our photography. So in landscape photography, colors can be chaotic. I mean, nature kind of gives us whatever it wants. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason for it. So in some cases, we can do some things in post-processing to help balance an image. Uh, now, don't let this affect what you take photos of, but know that you can make some adjustments to remove potential distractions. So quickly, before we go over the types of color harmonies there are, I want to show you guys a chart that kind of uh, tells you the relationship between hue, saturation, and brightness, or luminance is what it's called here in, on the Adobe Suite like Lightroom and Photoshop. You can go inside the HSL panel in Lightroom and you can see this exact same thing, but I want to visually show you guys what this is. So what you're looking at here is uh, the color wheel. So uh, the color wheel looking pretty much straight down, this is dealing with hues. Hues are simply fully saturated colors. So right here in the middle, you're gonna have pure white. And as we move farther out here along the color wheel, you're gonna get to full saturation. So uh, the hues all lie around the outside of the color wheel. So you got from blues to greens, the yellows, uh, or reds and oranges, all the way from magenta back to blue. So that's a pretty simplistic approach of what hues are. Now, let's look at this other chart here so what we're looking at here now is if you look um, a 3d version of what we were just looking at uh, you got your saturation up here which is from white to fully saturated okay so if you start here in the center of the color wheel and work your way out you're gonna get uh, white all the way to a full fully saturated color or fully saturated hue uh, the value here you're gonna look at that's actually your brightness or your luminosity. So you start down at the bottom from black all the way up to white. So, and there's a, obviously a full range in between of how much brightness or luminance you can actually add to a color or, or subtract from a color. And of course, again, your hue is all the colors surrounding a fully saturated color. So what I wanna do is kind of pull up the color picker here, use our active color color picker here foreground so what this square represents is actually this square right here so as i move around you're going to see the color move and adjust from zero or white to fully saturated okay so that's what we're looking at here fully saturated color and as we go down you're gonna see the brightness change. So here in the panel, you're gonna see a percentage. This is the brightness. So you're gonna start up at, at very bright white, 100%, and it's gonna start moving its way down to black, which is zero. Okay, that's what all these numbers mean over here. And then you got your saturation from, you know, zero to, you know, 100, fully saturated. So that's, that's how that works. That's how your color picker works. So that's all you're doing with this uh, square panel here in the foreground color is um, yeah, just doing that. So that's a, just a visual I wanted to give you guys on how saturation, hue, and brightness work because that does play a part when it comes to post-processing and how to push different colors to, to make them kind of, uh, you know, just, just to look better together. So uh, I want to go over a few images here that I have and talk about the different types of color harmonies there are and how I apply them to these specific images. So uh, this is the first color harmony I want to talk about. 
It's called analogous. Analogous colors are colors adjacent to each other along the color wheel. You can see in the photo here that the colors I bring out in the sky and the landscape all have a purpose. So this wasn't actually the, the color of the sky originally. It was very kind of a subtle blue, not quite so uh, magenta in it. But uh, because of the glow, the alpine glow on uh, Mount Fitzroy here, and then a lot of the fall colors, I wanted to kind of keep it in an, an analogous color harmony. So I'm going to pull up a color wheel here, which you can get if you go up to Window uh, Extensions, and you can actually have Adobe Color Themes. You can get that, uh, and it's uh, it's pretty nice. So what you can do here, I'll show you how this works. Is I'm going to grab the color picker. And I'm going to look at, at this entire image and see what my primary color is in this. So if I look at the entire image, just basically looking at it, you can tell that uh, red is going to be probably the, uh, the main color, the primary color here. So, so yeah, so red is definitely the primary color here. So what I'm doing is I am looking at the color harmony analogous um, right here. You go on here, you can just click on analogous. It'll kind of bring it up. and. So luckily, naturally, this um, there wasn't really any colors that fell outside of this color harmony. Like I said, just the, the blue hues, I kind of had to push towards magenta down here just so I have that kind of um, blue sky because if it was blue, it would have been a little too far outside of the color harmony and it would have looked a little bit off. So And, and I see that a lot with, with shots like this. You have a really blue sky because at this point of the day, uh, when the sun's actually up and you're getting this nice red alpine glow on some peaks, the the sky is going to already be blue. So I want to just not make it unrealistic, but, you know, I always want to keep within the context of nature, but also at the same time try and push these colors to kind of match. So I push the hue of the blue more towards a magenta. That way it stayed within that analogous color harmony. So I kind of just desaturated blue a little bit and then push the hue over to more of a magenta color. Now I can go crazy with saturation and contrast and Orton effect and warp mountains and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, you can see how I can push colors in the sky to be more magenta, add a bit of different saturation in the reds and then the clouds to make the fall colors in the bush by the waterfall. So all the colors fall within that color harmony. So other than that blue sky, everything was pretty close. You know, all the reds in the fall colors and the foliage, uh, the waterfall doesn't have much color. This kind of has a, had a little bit of a green tint to it that I had to kind of desaturate and, uh, and really kind of take the, the edge off of it, I guess you can say. It didn't distract from anything. You know, everything right here, I was able to just kind of push towards that analogous color harmony and yeah, it came out pretty good, I think. Okay guys, so the second color harmony I want to talk about is called complementary. These colors lie opposite of each other on the color wheel. This is an extremely popular color harmony. Uh, Hollywood movies use this and you'll see in a lot of travel videos here on YouTube as well. Now an example of this is teal and orange. Super popular, especially on Instagram. Uh, it's warm and cool tones. You know, warm and cool colors, you know, it's very attractive. You know, people will put like teal in the shadows or in the sky and then, you know, put a warm orange color, you know, in the mid-tones and the highlights. And uh, it's an image here I took in the dead forest of Patagonia. Now, this is a very muted and desaturated version of complementary harmony. Now, there were some greens on here. You can see some of the greens. But what I did was I desaturated and kind of uh, lowered the brightness on them to keep from them from being too much of a distraction. I wanted it to be just mainly blues and yellows. So what I want to do here is kind of click on what I think is the main color, which is a blue. Now come down here to complementary, and you can see. Uh, oh, sorry, no, I gotta. So I forgot to uh, add this. Okay, there we go. So you can see here that the blue and the pretty much yellows are opposite of each other so and I can move this just a little bit here and there and then as I move the saturation in and lower the saturation and all this stuff you can see here so I got blue and I got yellow that's the main colors that I wanted green is obviously outside of that color harmony so what I did was I really desaturated these colors and just wanted to bring out those two colors in particular and so I think this image here 
Besides being obviously one, I mean, one of my favorite images that I took in Patagonia, it was something that I deliberately did to keep within this complementary color harmony. All right, so the next harmony I want to touch on is monochromatic. A lot of people think that it's just black and white, but it can be all one color as well. So black and white obviously is monochromatic. This, vim, this image here I wanted to show you guys because I could show you a black and white, but I wanted to show you guys another image of actual color that can still be considered monochromatic. There can be differences in brightness and saturation within that color, but still only consists of one color. So in this image, I use varying different blues in the sky and then also on the mountain, some of in the snow here. Uh, Everything is obviously really quite blue. And uh, if I come up with monochromatic, everything is all within this blue tone here. Now, these, these tones can vary just slightly all within the same hue. And you can see here, if we look at the color wheel and look at the image, obviously everything is very blue. Uh, it's a moody image and something that I did deliberately to, you know, really just make it extremely moody. This is obviously a creative uh, rendition of the scene. Now, I obviously didn't look like this, but, you know, I flipped it to black and white, kind of liked it, but I wanted to kind of experiment with a, a blue moody tone. So I added a, a, a bit of blue to it and really liked the way it turned out. But yes, this is definitely considered monochromatic. All right, guys. So this next one is a um, obviously very colorful image. The next color theory I want to talk about is triad. I took this photo in Kauai on the Nepali coast. Uh, one of my favorite photos this is actually a handheld panel because I forgot my tripod. We had rode a, um, a helicopter on the Nepali coast uh, earlier in the day and just completely left my tripod back at the Airbnb. So, um, But anyway, it turned out okay. And uh, this was actually completely covered in cloud about 10 minutes before this happened. As soon as that sunset, man, that clouds broke up and this just oh, absolutely fantastic. So anyway, a little bit behind the scenes there of the, this photo. But uh uh, so you can see there's a lot of green warm tones you can see there's kind of a bluish magenta and then you got some some reds up in here and oranges so um, if you look at this though these greens when the sun hits it it's actually a quite a yellowish orange color and most of these what you would consider greens are actually more on the yellow side now what a triad is is triads are three colors evenly spaced on the color wheel so you can see like i said i have greens yellows and blues in the ocean now there was some yellow that was very light in the sky as the sun was setting that i noticed during post-processing it didn't really go too well with the rest of these colors as i felt i kind of felt it fell outside of the color harmony so i was simply cropping out part of the sky up here I kind of got rid of that so I used cropping instead of color adjustment to get rid of a color that was in the sky that I didn't really think went well with this particular color harmony. The decision to drop the sky was both a compositional choice as well as color harmony. But what I can do here is click on the, I can even click on this blue color here and then use it as a selective color and then go to triad and what you're going to see here is I have green. I have a bit of yellow and I have a bit of bluish magenta and that's all of these colors here. You got your, your yellowish orange warmer tones, you got your green, yellow, and then you also got your blues in the ocean here. So this is a perfect example of triad and like I said, there's always a little bit of li a wiggle room when it comes to the hues. You want to keep it evenly spaced on the color wheel. So like I said, this is never going to be perfect. So I think if you just at least take it into consideration and if there's anything that really falls outside of the color wheel to try and minimize that by either desaturating or even cropping to get rid of it because the yellow that was in the, the sky was kind of this yellow over here. Not to say that it would have looked bad, but I just, I thought both compositionally and as far as the color harmony went, it was the best decision to just completely crop out that part of the sky. All right, so this, um, this next photo is from White Sands, New Mexico. And uh, the color harmony I want to talk about is called Dyad. Now in Photoshop on the color wheel, this is actually labeled as compound. So it's defined as two colors spaced two hues apart. Now there's a bit of flexibility with this color harmony as well as any time you have two colors. There are many different color combinations that go well together that don't necessarily fit into any particular color combination. 
what I want to look at here is you have kind of some orangish pink and blue. So I'm going to click on this orangish pink here, set it as the primary color, and then you can see here how, uh, let's see, compound. So compound is, like I said, two hues apart, but this can actually be flipped. So what we're going to do here is kind of flip this over to the blue with the pinks. So you can see here that if I have a little bit of the blues um, and you go two hues over, you're getting into the kind of the orangish pinks and that's what this kind of is. Now, this particular color here kind of falls more towards the reddish, but I think this works well. And then this actually kind of falls more towards a little bit more pink in some of these areas. So like I said, it's kind of a gray area a little bit, but this was an image that I thought would go really well. Now you have this kind of blue up here that doesn't really add to the photo. Um, but I, what I did was I desaturated it quite a bit and made it a lot less distracting because the color here in the patterns in the sand dunes as well as uh, where the light is hitting on this giant sand dune here and the shadow that it casts on the other side just really provides, provided these really beautiful tones and uh, really beautiful color contrast between the two. You know, you got this warm a uh, beautiful, beautiful warm tone here, and then you got this bluish tone in the shadows, and then you got them the, the same exact uh, color contrast in these little patterns down here in the foreground. You got uh, this warm kind of light hitting these, these small edges, and then you have the shadows uh, with this nice uh, blue cool tone. So one, this was one of my favorite images of this particular trip I took a couple of years ago. I just, I really love the way the color worked on here. And I did push this, uh, the light hitting these dunes, I did push it a little more towards the oranges and uh, saturated them just a little bit compared to what they originally were because I had this color harmony in mind when I did edit this photo. So then there's a few other color harmonies as well, guys. Split complementary colors, quadratic, is essentially two separate complementary color harmonies in one image and for those it's a bit more complicated and harder to achieve and that gets into a place where maybe you're overthinking things a little bit too much again and like I said it's not always necessary or even possible in some cases to utilize color harmonies but I think by having an understanding you can definitely take your photo to the next level all right guys so that's it for this video I just wanted to give you guys kind of a general idea of these color harmonies well something you can keep in mind when post-processing there are things you can do not just as far as removing distractions like clone stamping and things like that but you can actually use color to remove distractions by desaturating colors that don't look good within the photo or cropping things out if it's a color like a sky color that's not really well because you, you don't always need these skies you know like i said in that kawaii picture you know i actually cropped out the, the sky completely because it didn't go well with the image both compositionally and uh as far as the color harmony went so yeah guys thank you guys so much for watching that's going to be it for this video and stay tuned for the next one where i'm going to take you guys into lightroom and i will actually go through an image and show you guys how i can adjust some colors and uh, kind of go over what we just talked about. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.